it is in your presence that everything changes we have been trying to change our lives for so many years with nothing happening always falling back getting back into our old nature till we discovered the secret of living in your presence and in your presence consciousness changes our perceptions are shifted and suddenly what was impossible becomes possible so we pray for the grace of presence that you will become more and more real not by our efforts not by what we can do but by your gift of grace let your presence become real for each and every one of us we grow in that awareness we grow in your presence and your great love moves by supernatural power in every one of us we thank you lord praise you worship you lord thank you jesus bless you lord honor you lord goodness and glory and honor to you lord worship you lord bless to you thank you jesus honor to you praise you father glory to you lord thank you jesus thank you lord praise you glory to your name thank you father praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord please be seated my brothers and sisters So good morning brothers and sisters so it was raining in the morning so we start uh, by the first reading uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 1 Deuteronomy 4:1 Hear now O Israel the decrees and laws i am about to teach you follow them so that you may live and may go in and take possession of the land that the lord your god the god of your fathers is giving to you so today the discussion is on the law of god obedience to the laws of god brings blessings devaniti eta ki karuvima aashirvade gen so on the surface it looks pretty simple you obey god and you get blessed but the problem is the heart of disobedience that we carry inside us prashne diyenne hadavata ape deviyanta akikaru wena gatiyak tiyena pravanatavayak tiyena hadavata the heart of disobedience so the question is why do we have a heart of disobedience when we really want to obey god and uh, how do we deal with that that's really the the reflection this morning if you look at verse 5 which is the next part of the reading c c1 c i have taught you decrees and laws <coughs> as the lord my god commanded me so that you may follow them in the land you are entering 
to take possession of it. Again now, Moses is talking to the people and saying, same thing, you obey God's law and you possess the land. So possessing land in the Old Testament or in the feudal system uh, is the ultimate wealth that you will have. You will be blessed, you will have wealth if you obey the law. Okay, let's look at the next verse. Six, observe them carefully. For they will show your wisdom and understanding to the nations who will hear about all these decrees and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, a few simple truths here. Number one, if you are really intelligent and developed. Intelligence is one thing, development is something else. If you are really intelligent and developed. What does that mean? Intelligent means you can understand, you know. You know, how do you define intelligence? It's an interesting thing, you know. How do you know that somebody is intelligent or not? You know, uh, there is a scientific method to do that. And the method is that you, how many connections can you see? So that's why when you go for an IQ test, uh, they give you boxes, squares, uh, dots, and they try to, to fill it in. What, do, what, they, what they want to do is to find out how expanded is your capacity to see the connections between things? So the greater you have capacity, the more, the higher your IQ. That's how you gauge your intelligence. So the capacity to see the overall picture and to, to see the connections, the greater your connect, the capacity, the higher your intelligence. That's how you work out uh, intelligence. But there are very intelligent people who do pretty stupid things. So, why is that? Because though you have the capacity to see the connections, there are emotional, subconscious, underdeveloped drives within us. In our childhood, in our growing up, in our interaction with life, those things can be very damaged. So therefore, there can be very intelligent people who make foolish decisions, who, who act out of impulse, who react off the drop of a hat, who mess their whole thing up by one kind of behavior or the other. Are you following what I'm saying? For centuries they couldn't define the difference. So it's only in the 20th century that quietly people began to realize that intelligence and there is a need for something more. And this underdevelopment of that person who has intelligence can cause a massive problem. <laughs> Because they use their intelligence, the ability to make connections, the ability to understand things, to go for the wrong goals. To go for sinful goals. To go for criminal goals. To go for things that can really be detrimental to so many others and to themselves. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, uh, we can see this in our own lives. Intelligent enough to understand that something is going wrong. But unable to control the things that go wrong. And here, the law, if you are really developed, so there is, today they have identified intelligence per se, intellectual intelligence, emotional intelligence. So we used to teach emotional 
intelligence in all these organizations. And you could see dawning on people when they suddenly realize all their problems are coming from unbalanced emotions and underdeveloped internal personalities. And third, there is something called spiritual intelligence. That is an awareness of the truths of the spirit, of the world of spirituality, an intelligence that comes from God. When you, if you have all three, what will happen? You will naturally obey the law of God. <laughs> because it will look very clear to you. You know, obeying God seems to be the best option. But because we don't have it, obeying God seems a real pain. It goes against our natural instinct, underdeveloped emotions. It goes against our spiritual instincts that are based on trying to satisfy our selves. And often we end up hurting ourselves and hurting the people we care about the most. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Ask any parent how intelligently they deal with their children. <laughs> I'll kill you. <laughs> so, so, why do you... Because the emotional unbalance takes over your natural intelligence. <laughs> So, what happens is, then you create a lot of the hurts inside. Do you understand what I'm saying? Can you see? This is really the problem of life. And many don't define, they can't understand this truth. Look at the, look at the verse 7. Can't look. <laughs> what other nation is so great? As to have their gods near them, the way the Lord our God is near us whenever we pray to Him. So the amazing thing is that the Israelites had a great gift, which is the presence of God. So the answer to the loss of intelligence whether it is natural intelligence, emotional intelligence, or spiritual intelligence, is the presence of God. So actually, when we are telling people, you, you have to be like this, you have to think like this, you have to change like this, we are assuming that they can do it on their own. But if they are broken inside, their internal being underdeveloped, you will never do it. So then we punish them. So punishment is also of uh, something that works. Why is that? You give greater pain. <laughs> so punishment is to give pain. And say, okay, the pain that I'm going to give you for doing this is going to be greater than the pain that you will go through if you don't do it. That means now I want to, I want to really uh, to do something nasty to a person. Now, uh, I feel a pain by not doing that. I want to do it. But I control myself because if I do it, the punishment I'll get is a greater pain. So, actually, every form of punishment is a very low level way of dealing with life. Because we are offering greater pain as a deterrent. And not only physical pain, no? those days we got enough. Now people don't get the, you know, the physical pain, psychological pain, material pain. You lose this, you lose that. You will, you will be deprived of this, you will be deprived of that. So people choose to behave themselves because they don't want to get into greater pain. But they are never converted. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Many people stay in their marriages also like that. <laughs> the pain of separation, the pain of divorce, the shame of it all is greater than staying together. 
So people say those days nobody divorced. <laughs> that doesn't mean they lived happily ever after. <laughs> <laughs> they fought like cat and dog. <laughs> they were unhappy. People cried on the pillows. <laughs> they were depressed and sad. But the pain involved, the shame involved in leaving your marriage was so great that people didn't think about it. Are you following what I'm saying? Can you understand? It doesn't mean that they were converted. <laughs> It's the same thing, You're going on, doing the same thing. So now people say, okay, make the deterrent very much and people will behave themselves. So that's the, that's the way of the Quran. <laughs> that's why, you know, cut the hand off. <laughs> they won't steal again. <laughs> cut the head off, make it a deterrent, show them that they will be severely punished. There is no internal transformation ever. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Actually, uh, this is definitely not God's method. How do you know that? Because God could have easily taken away that thing called freedom and the, the, our ability to make decisions of our own. He could have easily taken it away and made us beautifully perfect robots. Behaving ourselves exactly, you know. And we would have had no problem, you would have had a perfectly harmonious world. Everything working in harmony. But we would never, he would never have sons and daughters who would love him back in freedom. So ultimately, in a love affair, the Man and the woman, it's important for them to know that the other person has chosen to love him or love her. That's what gives value and meaning to life. I have made a choice. I had so many, ten other choices or a hundred other choices. So that's why when husband and wife fight, they say, you know, so and so was waiting to marry me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and I left all that and married you fool. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, what happens is, why is that? Because <laughs> we have made a choice. And all the time, that freedom to make a choice is what gives us great value. And you must remember, there is another way through this process. So the law is the, the ultimate revelation of how men and women should live. But we must learn to grow to that place. How do we grow? We look at the gospel. The gospel is Matthew 5 verse 17. Matthew 5, verse 17. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. The tension in the time of the Lord and also in the early church was that Christians were giving a lower standard. That's the problem the Jews had with the Christians. The, Christ the problem was, they said you don't have to follow these laws, you don't have to eat these foods and stop eating these foods. And they said, you have lowered the standards. And Jesus is saying, no, the law will be fulfilled by my disciples. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, actually this tension exists even in the modern world. Where people lower the standards of morality, saying, God loves me. God loves me, God loves you. So after all, having this wrong relationship is okay. Because God loves both of us. I remember a person who was talking to me, uh, who is a who is a spiritual person, 
who was having a wrong relationship, you know. And uh, I asked this person, how on earth did you get into this, you know? Didn't you know your conscience didn't tell you that you are doing something wrong? No, I felt pretty bad. But the other person said, as long as you have love, it's okay. <laughs> so, that's a case of intelligence being overridden by emotion. <laughs> so, so you, can, you can see how, how this whole thing works. But Jesus has said, no, I have come to fulfill completely the laws of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How does he do that? That's today's answer. In the Old Testament, the people were given the law. And that's all. God helped them from outside. And that's all. But their internal nature remained untouched. But in the New Testament, it's completely different. Why is that? Because Jesus Christ is not only a teacher. He is not only someone who instructs us. He is the Lord who died for us and he is the Lord who has risen from the dead. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So because of that, we have two, three things. Number one, we have something called the forgiveness of our sins. So if you find that in your intelligence you realize you have made a mistake, in your emotions you find out you are unbalanced, in your spiritual intelligence you realize that life has gone wrong, you can have, I can have a gift from God which is called the forgiveness of our sins. We can be cleansed of that by the blood of Jesus. And most people don't have that difference. For them the Old Testament is the same as the New Testament. That is number one. Number two, we have the presence of God living with us. And that's the Eucharist is the sign of this. That's why, you know, over 2000 years the Eucharist has been protected by the Holy Spirit inside the heart of the church. Why? Because it is the sign and the symbol and the reality of a God who comes to live inside of us. To do one. So that this change that is not possible for us within our nature can be made possible by the living presence of God inside us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is really the good news. And that's why we have to seek His presence. That's why we need Him. First of all, not even obedience to the law, not being faithful, not being good, First of all, we need to have Him inside our lives. Even the, the good news is that even the worst sinner can have Him. Through the blood of Jesus, the forgiveness of our sins, we receive this great gift of God coming to live inside us. In the Old Testament, the Lord was with them. As a people, that was the difference. In the New Testament, God is inside us. The presence of God. That is the second gift. The third gift is, we have something called the Holy Spirit. The power of God, the energy of God, the life of God. So that Jesus living inside us is not simply a thought. So unfortunately when you look at history, you can see many people held to the right accurate theology. But they never experienced it. So the result is, we know the truth but we don't experience it. 
So we know that you receive Jesus through the blessed sacrament. But few people's nature and life is changed by it. Why is that? Because their anger is the same. Their temptations are the same. Their brokenness is the same. Their behavior is the same. Why is that? Because this presence of Jesus in their hearts is only a thought in their minds. It has not moved beyond intelligence. How does it move into the emotions, into the subconscious and into the spirit? By the gift of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit makes this experience a living thing. And suddenly we know his love. We hear his voice. We experience his presence. And uh, our knowledge of God grows deeper inside. It's amazing. Then the laws of God start becoming attractive. The way of God seems to become more intelligent. And our desire to be obedient to God grows inside our hearts. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's the power we need in our life. Otherwise, you can see carefully if you notice, most people are assuming that it is by our own strength that we are obedient to God. Not so. Not by our own strength. So today the good news for all of us, what is that? That we can completely fulfill the laws of God. How can we do that? Because God has given us the gift. One of forgiveness through his blood. Two, the presence of God in our lives through Jesus living inside us. And number three, the power of the Holy Spirit. So seek him. Seek him. So, I was reading this morning uh, 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 a nun who has given the reflection in Magnificat. She says, everyone is called. And then she says, we are not called to a work. We are not called to a job. You know, we, I, I never realized that when she, till she wrote that, you know. We think I'm called to preach. I'm called to serve, I'm called to this, I'm called to that. She says, no, you are first and foremost called to God. It's amazing. Called to God. Called to be with Him. That's our call. Everyone is called. And the result of being with God is that we are sent to do something. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So this morning, let us become aware of this truth. You and I, we are called first and foremost to be with God. Forgiveness, presence of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. When you have these three things inside us, we will be intelligent enough to obey the laws of God. It will become natural to us to be faithful to God. It will become from us inside an energy to love God. And our life will be put in order. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Is it clear what I'm saying? Can you understand? Shall we be in the presence of Jesus? You know, these last few days we have been speaking and not praying. So you can sit, that's okay. We are going to enter into the truth. So you can sit straight with your spine straight. Do you know that your brain travels along the spine? And that's why there is a saying in Singhala. They say, Mole Bahalad, they ask. No. So, 
So, uh, when you keep your spine straight, you can focus better. Those who are standing, there are chairs here in front, if you like to come in. Okay. The chairs here, the chairs there. Just breathe in. Hold. One, two, three, four. Breathe out quietly. Hold. One, two, three, four. Breathe in. Hold. One, two, three, four. Breathe out. Hold. One, two, three, four. Breathe in. Hold. One, two, three, four. Breathe out. Hold. One, two, three, four. Let every thought be made captive in your abdomen, in your stomach. As you see your stomach expand. And then as your stomach contracts. Just allow your thoughts to focus only on your stomach. Breathe in, hold, one, two, three, four. Breathe out, hold, one, two, three, four. Let us use our intelligence this morning to open ourselves to Jesus. Come as you are. I love you is the word. Come as you are, I love you. So let's come before the Lord as we are this morning. As we breathe in and hold. Breathe out and hold. Let the love of Jesus enter your thoughts this morning. As it flows in your mind. Every thought taken into the love of Jesus. Maybe I have been thinking that I am alone, my mind separated. But let the thought flow. No, Jesus is loving me and is within me just now. Let every thought be touched by his love. Let that love flow into your forehead. Feel it now with your mind's eyes as your forehead is touched by His love. Let it flow into your eyes. Feel it now as the touch of Jesus over your eyes. Now, I can see him because my eyes are touched by his love. <coughs> Let it flow over your ears. I can hear his love, the words of his love. Let it flow over your nostrils, over your face. I'm breathing in his love. I'm becoming conscious of that love. Let it flow over your mouth. I'm speaking his words of love. Let it glow upon your face. The presence of Jesus in my life. And it glows softly, quietly. And then it flows down my neck. softly, quietly into my emotions and loved by Jesus my subconscious loved by Jesus my fears touched by Jesus as he tells me 
I am your guardian. I am your protector. I am your future. I am the way. You don't have to defend yourself. You don't have to be aggressive. You don't have to be fearful. For the Lord who is greater than the world is living inside of me. The letter of John says, The one who is within me is greater than the world outside. So every financial crisis, every relationship problem, every person that brings fear into our hearts, anxieties, tensions, let it be stilled by His love flowing in. It's all right, He says. I am here. I am living inside of you. I am facing those issues. Not only will I face it through you, I will work outside in the minds and hearts of people, in circumstances. I'll open doors. I'll create situations. And I'll take you through it. Now I'm getting spiritual intelligence. I'm beginning to see that the one who is inside me is greater than the world outside. So I'm relaxing into his love. His love is flowing into my subconscious, into the very depths of my fears and taking it over and saying, it's all right. I'm going to handle it deep inside. Let it flow into your stomach, into the innards, every organ hidden inside being touched, your heart transformed and loved into health, your liver, your kidneys, your pancreas, every part of your inner being, forgiven, Maybe we have abused our organs of our body but been touched by His love. It's been changed. Going down our legs now. Feel the energy flow of His love. Down to our toes. Flowing easily. Coming up the back of our leg. Flowing easily up. Up to my waist and then up my spine up to my shoulders the energy of his love and then quietly resting on my shoulders let it flow down your hands first down your left hand to your elbow right down to your fingertips up again to your elbow up to your shoulders right down your right hand to your elbows right down to your fingertips coming up again to your elbows to your shoulders and then right up to your head glowing glowing the presence of Jesus living inside of me and now my spiritual intelligence is awakening I'm loved I'm cared for I am strengthened I'm looked after my future is assured because I have Jesus living inside of me and His power is the power of the Holy Spirit now. Greater than any weakness I have. Greater than any challenge I have. Feel the anointing now. <clears throat> Flowing over your head. The anointing of the Holy Spirit. Into your eyes. So that you have insight. Into your ears so that you can hear the very voice of God into your nostrils so that you can breathe and sense the presence of God over your mouth 
so that you speak the words of the spirit over your face glowing with the presence right down to your emotions and your heart the touch of the power of the holy spirit flowing right through you right now right through into your subconscious into your depths right now over your very body down in your stomach down to you down your legs right up to your toes over up again to your waist up your spine to your shoulders down your hands to your fingertips right up again to your face glowing with the anointing of the holy spirit we have god living inside of us this is our greatest treasure we have the power of the holy spirit running in our lives this is our greatest wealth i can deal with any issue inside of me by being surrendered to this truth and god who is the lord of the universe will handle every challenge outside of me putting it all together bringing his answers making a breakthrough releasing his presence right through experience it just now experience it flowing right through your being hold it in your heart hold it deep inside spiritual intelligence taking over your underdeveloped emotions i was afraid of this and afraid of that now the fears are quieted and rested i was desiring this and desiring that sinful things to try and fulfill my heart now these sinful drives quietly rested no there is greater joy deeper happiness greater fulfillment in the heart of our god so i surrender my temptation i surrender my desire i let go my lust to be moved by the energy of god moving deep inside and my brokenness been healed and touched by this great love breathe in hold breathe out hold breathe in hold breathe out hold breathe in hold breathe out hold just worship the lord worship is the response that we give to this great love Say thank you Lord. Thank you Jesus. Worship you Father. Hallelujah. Praise you Jesus. Praise you Lord. Glory to your name. Praise you Lord. Praise you Jesus. Praise you Father. Thank you Lord. Bless you. Thank you Lord. Honor to you Lord. Glory to you Jesus. Praise you Lord. Shall we all stand? here in your presence like a first verse saying found in your hands fullness of joy so the promise this morning complete joy found in your hands fullness of joy every fear suddenly wiped away how does that happen here in your presence when the presence of god becomes real there is forgiveness there is the comfort of the person of jesus living inside us and we the power of the holy spirit assuring us every challenge will be met every situation dealt with because he's not only working inside us he's working in the very situations changing everything for us you can go to the 
next verse all of my gains now fade away what i thought i must hold and win now fade away every crown no longer on display so those who wear crowns of the human nature thinking we are superior we are greater we have won the battle we are we are subdued and we are that every crown no longer on display quietly we hide the crowns why is that because we are ashamed when we look at the maturity of god and we receive spiritual intelligence ego and the crown are quietly kept away because we have something greater abad alud gyusume devian manse dena tag ga tamai unhanse neetiya pidipadinna apada taniyama inna kiyanne unhanse kiyenawa mamma obata obe waradunu tan walata mage rudiren samawa dila deka mama abit oba tula jeevat vela tuna shuddhaatmale pe obata dila neetiya pidipadi me hadawata man oba tula ati gara ඒ විතරක් නෙමෙයි උනන් සපන මතක් කරනවා මම ඔබ තුල ජීවත් වෙනකොට මගේ වැඩ සිටීම ඔබේ අවබෝධය වර්ධනය කරනවා මිනිස්යෝ දකින විදිහට දකින එක නතර වෙලා දෙවියන්ගේ චින්තනයට ඔබ ඇතුල් වෙනවා එතකොට දෙවියන්ට කී කර වීම අත්තටම කල යුතු දේ බවට හදවතේ ඇති වෙනවා ඒ විතරක් නෙමෙයි උන්වහන්සේ අපට ස්ථීරත්වයක් දෙනවා ඔබේ ඇතුලේ ප්‍රශ්නෙට මම බලයක් වෙනවා වගේම ඔබේ පරිසරය තුළ ක්‍රියා කරලා අනිත් කෙනාව ඔබේ විරුද්ධ කාර්යාව වුණත් ඔබගේ යහපතට ක්‍රියා කරන ආයුධයක් බවට මම පත් කරනවා මේ මහා තැග්ග උන්වහන්සේගේ වැඩ සිටීමෙන් අපි තෙක් තෙක බෙදා ගන්න අවස්ථාව I will answer that pull us on now they are dealer we give the Lord a hand and we say thank you Jesus praise you father glory to your name worship your name thank you Lord hallelujah hallelujah worship your father glory to your name praise you Lord hallelujah 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 glory to your name praise you Jesus praise you father glory to your name thank you Jesus Worship you Lord. Bless you Lord. Holy you Lord. Thank you Jesus.
seeking your presence and you have given us the gift of praise and worship to come to your presence so we come with praise and worship you have given us the grace of your word under the anointing of the holy spirit so that when we read your scripture in the spirit and we worship with those words through those words by the power of your anointing your presence is transferred into our hearts our hearts are burn, burn with your love we become aware of your presence and quietly the security that only you can give the awareness that only you can build and the leading that only you can give starts moving inside our hearts so lord we pray let that presence become real as we spend that hour before you in this day lord let us experience your great mighty presence by the power of your holy spirit and because you are giving it to us we just want to say once again thank you lord thank you. worship you lord Hallelujah. yes Hallelujah. give the lord a mighty hand we thank you jesus praise you Praise the, Lord. Praise, the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you brothers and sisters. So remember, remember one. Don't let the birds carry away the word.